Now that it's clear why we need to distinguish between the two poles or types of depression, in this lesson you'll learn how to perform that assessment. The depressed patient sitting in your exam room may seem like an unlikely candidate for the manic symptoms associated with bipolar disorder, so screening for manic symptoms involves focusing on past history information. Scales, such as the Mood Disorder Questionnaire or the Young Mania Rating Scale, can be used. But a simpler approach to work the screening into the patient interview uses questions based on the mnemonic Dig Fast. With either approach, if patients have a history of substance use, ensure that they're answering the questions about periods of time when they weren't taking substances such as amphetamines or cocaine. Patients who use such stimulants very often present as though they are manic, but these substance-induced episodes do not qualify for a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Ask patients to consider whether there has ever been a period of time lasting at least three to four days where they experienced a very happy or a very irritable mood and felt that their energy levels are noticeably higher than normal for them. The mnemonic dig fast prompts for further symptoms during that time. D stands for distractibility, being unable to focus on school or work or devoting time to unnecessary or meaningless tasks. I is for indiscretion, making poorer and potentially harmful decisions, such as spending a lot of money or suddenly deciding to quit your job. G is for grandiosity, believing you have special skills or abilities, feeling overly confident. F stands for flight of ideas, or feeling your thoughts were coming too fast or others having difficulty following your train of thought. A is activity increase, making lots of plans or starting lots of projects that cannot be reasonably completed in the time you are allowing for them, or staying up very late to work on them. S is for sleep deficit, sleeping much less than you normally do, or not sleeping at all, and not feeling that you need to sleep because you had so much energy. Note that this is different from insomnia, where a patient is tired and wants to sleep but can't. And finally, T is for talkativeness, talking much more and at a faster rate than you usually do. If a patient reports a period of elevated mood and energy and identifies with at least three of the symptoms reviewed using DIGFAST, that is a positive screen for a history of manic symptoms, and the current depression should be treated as bipolar, not unipolar depression. In addition to the symptom assessment, other information from a patient's history can be red flags for bipolar disorder. None of these flags are part of the formal diagnostic criteria, but their presence suggests that the possibility of this diagnosis should be carefully considered. Some of these red flags include a history of a poor response to antidepressants, an early onset of mood symptoms, perhaps as early as childhood or adolescence, a high frequency of mood episodes having only short periods of what they consider a normal mood, a family history of bipolar disorder, a history of postpartum depression, severe depressive episodes with a tendency to experience the depressive symptoms of increased sleep, poor energy, slowed movements, and feelings of guilt. Screening for manic symptoms in patients presenting with depressive episodes can lead to earlier, more accurate diagnoses. This, in turn, guides treatment recommendations, including, importantly, avoiding the prescription of antidepressants as the primary agents to manage bipolar depression. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.